Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm taking a request from a viewer. I'm going to be evaluating this infinite sum here. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n cubed over m factorial. If you want to have a go at evaluating this sum, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. And I'm going to jump straight into a solution. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is actually take out the first couple of terms here, and I'll point out why we're doing that in just a second. So if we take out n equals 1, that's just going to be 1 cubed over 1 factorial, and then n equals 2 is going to be 2 cubed all over 2 factorial, like so, and then what we're left with is just the sum now from n being bigger than or equal to 3 of n cubed over n factorial. And the reason I've done this is because essentially we want to use the fact uh, that n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times so on, all the way down to 1. And then notice that, well, the first n in the bottom can cancel with one of the n's on the top. But then we've also got an n minus 1 and an n minus 2 in the bottom. Um, and they can sort of, or almost cancel, with the n's on the top. Um, but of course, it's not going to be completely exact. But the reason we have to then have n being bigger than or equal to 3 is so then that n minus 3 factorial makes sense. Because if... We said, say only took out the first term and we had n being bigger than or equal to 2, n minus 3 factorial wouldn't really make sense for n being equal to 2. Uh, so we've got this, well, let's evaluate what this is. 1 cubed over 1 is just 1, uh, it's just 1, and then 2 cubed over 2 is just going to be 4, so 1 plus 4 is 5. And then adding on the sum, n being bigger than or equal to 3, and now, as I said, we're going to write n factorial as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times uh, so on. So that one of the n's can cancel, and what we're left with is n squared all over n minus 1 times n minus 2, all multiplied by n minus 3 factorial, like so. And what we want to do is kind of split this multiplication down here, like so. So this is just going to be equal to 5 plus the sum n being bigger than or equal to 3, of n squared over this guy here, and this thing here is almost equal to 1, which would be nice, um, because then all we have is n minus 3 factorial, but it's not exactly equal to 1. We can write it as n over n minus 1 times n over n minus 2, multiplied by 1 over n minus 3 factorial, like so. But what is n over n minus 1? Well, that's simply 1 plus 1 over n minus 1. And similarly, n over n minus 2 is just going to be 1 plus 2 over n minus 2, like so. So, our infinite series that we started off with is nothing but 5 plus this infinite series here, which looks a lot messier, but now we can just expand these brackets here, and then we're just going to have a bunch of uh, constants over factorials, uh, which hopefully should be a lot easier to evaluate. So this is equal to 5 plus the sum from n being bigger than or equal to 3, well, this 1 times this 1 times this 1 over n minus 3 factorial is going to give us 1 over n minus 3 factorial, like so. This 1 times this 2 over n minus 2 is going to give us a 2 over n minus 2 uh, times 1 over n minus 3 factorial. That's going to be 2 over n minus 2 factorial, like so. Uh, this 1 over n minus 1 times this 1 is going to be just 1 over n minus 1 multiplied by 1 over n minus 3 factorial. Well, that's just going to be n minus 2 all over n minus 1 factorial. Okay, because n, this n minus 1 on the bottom will almost make this an n minus 1 factorial, but I'm missing a factor of n minus 2, so I multiply the top and bottom by this n minus 2 here. And then all I'm left with is 1 over n minus 1 times 2 over n minus 2, and multiplied by 1 over n minus 3 factorial, and that's going to give me a plus 2 over n minus 1 factorial, like so, and that's what that infinite series is. But now we can just split this as four infinite sums, and we can actually go ahead and evaluate a few of these. So let me just do that uh, up here quickly. Uh, we can evaluate at least, I think, three of these. This is going to be equal to 5 plus, well, the sum from n equals 3 of 1 over n minus 3 factorial, that's just the sum well, when n is 3, that's going to be 0 factorial. When n is 4, 1 factorial, and so on. So 1 over 0 factorial plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial, and so on. Well, that, by definition, is just going to be equal to e. So that deals with that first guy there. And how about this guy here? 2 over n minus 2 factorial. So it's going to be plus 2 lots of something. And what's the something? Well, we're starting from n equals 3, and we've got n minus 2 factorial. So that's going to be 1 over 1 factorial. 
plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, and so on. But we're missing the 1 over 0 factorial at the start, so that's going to be e minus 1, because 1 over 0 factorial is just 1. So this thing here is just e minus 1. So if I do the sum from n equals 3 to infinity of 1 over n minus 2 factorial, it's e minus 1, and then this 2 is the same as that 2 there. This guy I'm going to leave for now. Okay, and then this guy here we can go ahead and evaluate the sum from n equals 3 to infinity of 2 all over n minus 1 factorial. Again, we're going to have a plus 2 for that. And instead of starting from uh, 0 or 1, we're actually going to be starting from 2 because n equals 3, n minus 1 then will be equal to 2. So we've got 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial and so on. So we're missing the 1 over 0 factorial and the 1 over 1 factorial. So this is going to be e minus 2 like so. And then, of course, remember I said I was just missing this one, so I've got to add that one as well. The sum from n equals 3 to infinity of n minus 2 all over n minus 1 factorial, like so. So this infinite sum here is just equal to this guy here, but we can actually do some nice cancellations. Notice we've got a bunch of e's. We've got an e here, a 2e here, and a 2e here, so that's going to be equal to 5e. And quite nicely, the 5 is going to cancel with the... Oh, sorry, it's not going to cancel. It's almost going to cancel. We've got 5 minus 2, minus 4, so that's going to give us 5 minus 6, which is minus 1, and then we've got this infinite series here, the sum, n being bigger than or equal to 3, of n minus 2 all over n minus 1 factorial, like so. And the last thing we want to do is evaluate this infinite series here, and then of course add that onto this sum here, and that's going to give us our initial guy here. But let me clear up the whiteboard first. Okay, so we've proved that the infinite series we're interested in is equal to 5e minus 1 plus this other infinite series here. So all we've got to do is evaluate this guy here. And we're going to do a very similar thing as writing it as the sums of constants divided by factorials. So this, is going to, this guy here, which this sum we'll call s, say, for now, s is going to be equal to the sum from n being bigger than or equal to 3. Well, we've got n minus 2 over n minus 1 factorial. Well, I can just write that as n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial, like so. Okay, because obviously n minus 1 minus 1 is just n minus 2. This guy here reduces to 1 over n minus 2 factorial. And now we've got exactly what we want. Something over, uh, like a, uh, something over an n factorial, n minus 2 in this case, and then something over n minus 1 factorial. This thing we can evaluate, this is going to be equal to... Well, where are we starting? n equals 3. So this, this guy here, if we write this as two sums, this first one, 1 over n minus 2 factorial, this is going to start from uh, 1, because 3 minus 2 is 1, so we've got 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial, and so on. So we're missing out the 1 over 0 factorial, so this is going to be precisely e minus 1. And then we're subtracting off the sum from n equals 3 uh, to infinity of 1 over n minus 1 factorial. So that's going to start from 2. So 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial, and so on. So we're missing the 1 over 1 factorial and the 1 over 0 factorial. So that's going to be e minus 2. So we've got e minus 1 minus e minus 2. This is simply equal to 1, which is quite nice. So s, this infinite series here, is just equal to 1. So all in all, this guy here, the sum n being bigger than or equal to 1 of n cubed over n factorial, it's going to be 5e minus 1 plus 1, which of course is just 5e. So a nice integer multiple of e, which is pretty cute. And that solves our problem. Um, so I hope you have found that interesting. One thing you may ask is, what if we change this 3 here to some other integer? So if we look at, say, the trivial case where n is... Uh, sorry, instead of a 3, we put a 0. Then we've just got the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n factorial. And that's just going to be e minus 1, because again, we're missing off the 0 term. If you put a 1 here, well, we've got n over n factorial. And so that's going to be the sum of 1 over n minus 1 factorial. And we're starting from 1, so we're going to, that means we're going to start of 1 over 0 factorial, because it's n minus 1 in the denominator. So 1 over 0 factorial plus 1 over 1 factorial and so on. So that's just going to be e. So in the case, let's call this guy here k. So we'll call f of k the sum from n being bigger than or equal to 1 of n to the k over n factorial. So f of 0 is e minus 1. f of 1 is going to be e. It turns out that f of 2, I believe, is 2e. We've just shown that f of 3 is 5e. 
And I think I just plugged it into Wolfram Alpha. If you do f of 4, so the next one up you get 15e. And then f of 5, I believe, if I remember correctly, was 52e. So if we ignore f of 0, we see that they're all multiples of e integer multiples of e, which is not too surprising because we've got this n factorial in the bottom. But the kind of coefficients of e, we go 1, 2, 5, 15, 52, and I presume it continues on to be multiples of e, but uh, I haven't proved that. But it is quite interesting. They don't seem to follow any nice pattern. They don't seem to be Fibonacci numbers or triangle numbers or anything like that. So if anyone knows how to compute these coefficients, uh, if, you know, if, if, if indeed f of k is always a multiple of e, I'd be really interested. So if you know anything more about it, uh, let, let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, this guy here we're interested in n cubed over n factorial. The sum of that guy there equals 5e, which is a pretty nice result. I'm going to stop waffling now. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.